One of the best ways for me to reach more people with my Spanish course is by receiving positive product reviews and positive feedback from my students or my customers. So if there's one thing I could ask of you, it would be that if you're enjoying the course and learning a lot and progressing, go and leave a positive product review or positive feedback wherever you purchase this course. If you have feedback from me on ways that I could improve the course or things that I should add or tweak or change or remove altogether, please send me an email directly to my email inbox at admin at eSpanishTeacher.com and I will receive that feedback right away and uh, look for ways to integrate it and incorporate it into these lessons. Great. In today's lesson, lesson number six, we're going to talk about an important principle. Now that you are, you've built your foundation in subjects and verbs and verb conjugation, you're at a point where we can talk about something similar to verb conjugation, but what I like to look at it as is a, a slight derivative of verb conjugation. It's what I call irregular verbs. And in lesson six, we're going to talk about a certain type of irregular verb. And now don't let that term irregular get you nervous. It simply means that during the conjugation process, we're going to do something slightly different to the verb than what you've learned up to this point. But the three steps that we've covered are going to remain the same with a slight adjustment to the third step. So we will still um, identify the verb and drop the AR, ER, or IR ending from the verb infinitive. We will identify who the subject is and we will conjugate the verb. But it's this third step where we will do something a little different. Instead of conjugating the verb according to the standard conjugation chart that you've seen and that you're familiar with, we will conjugate it slightly differently. So it will, um, so the conjugation will be spelled differently than what the standard conjugation chart tells us. And I will show you those conjugations. So it's not something you really have to worry about. I like to think of this lesson uh, as uh, similar to one of my favorite foods, pickles. <laughs> Remember when you were younger and you used to see that jar of pickles sitting there and it kind of looked funny. When you open the lid, it certainly smelled funny. And the shape of a pickle is just a little bit awkward, right? <laughs> But over time, as you grow up and get more mature and your tastes mature, a lot of us start to really, really enjoy pickles, especially if we're eating it alongside of a club sandwich. So that's how I look at this concept. You know, when you're beginning in Spanish and you're learning the subject and verbs, you really like to stick to what's familiar, that standard conjugation chart. But over time, as you mature and your skills improve, you're able to kind of broaden what you, what you say and how you say it. And so that's what this lesson is all about. It's about broadening your capabilities to conjugate verbs. Now, with that said, you can sit back and enjoy lesson six while I go enjoy a club sandwich with a pickle. Here's the learning outline for today. I'm not going to start with vocabulary like I normally do. We're going to jump right to the concept. Once you have a, a firm understanding of the concept, then we will look at some vocabulary, followed by just a quick uh, caution related to some of the pitfalls that are common with this concept, and then a quiz and a speaking practice followed up by some comprehension. So here's the rule. Some verbs are not conjugated according to the normal conjugations that you're familiar with when yo is the subject, okay? Now remember, we're just talking present tense verbs. And so the, 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 the rule is that some present tense verb conjugations are irregular or they're spelled differently when yo is the subject. So we're not talking about when tu is the subject or el or ella or usted or nosotros, vosotros, or etc. We're just talking about when yo is our subject. And here they are. Um, let's go through them together. So the first irregular verb is caber, which means to fit. And the example is yo quepo. Okay, so yo quepo means I fit. 
it's really different than caber. It doesn't even sound like caber. And for that reason, it's irregular, okay? It doesn't fit our standard rule around how we conjugate a verb. Because normally you would look at caber and you would say, I'm gonna drop the ER ending. Um, I know that my subject is yo, therefore I'm gonna add an O and it would be cabo, yo cabo. But cabo is not right. This is an irregular verb, and so we have to conjugate it irregularly. So, first, caber, yo quepo. Next, caer, which means to fall, yo caigo. Yo caigo, I fall. Next, conducir. Conducir means to drive, and when yo is the subject, it becomes yo conduzco. Yo conduzco, I drive. Next, conocer. Conocer means to know, and I know is yo conozco. Escoger is next. It means to choose, and when uh, yo is the subject, it becomes yo escojo. Not yo escogo, because escogo is what you would think, um, but it is irregular, so it's yo escojo. Dirigir, to direct. Yo dirijo. Yo dirijo, I direct. Hacer, to make or to do. Yo hago. Remember that H is silent. Yo hago, I make or I do. And poner, to put or to place. Yo pongo, yo pongo. Let's look at the next set of verbs. Saber, that's a very common verb, which means to know. And when I is the subject, it becomes yo sé. This is a very common Spanish verb that you've probably heard a lot before, and it's probably kind of a common phrase that you hear probably on TV or uh, at school or in class or reading. Yo sé means I know. Salir, to leave or to exit. And when I is the subject, it becomes yo salgo. Seguir, to follow. When yo is the subject, becomes yo sigo. Yo sigo. I follow. Traer, to bring, becomes yo traigo. Tener, to have, becomes yo tengo. Yo tengo. Valer, means to be worth or to value. Yo valgo. Yo valgo. Venir, means to come. Yo vengo. Yo vengo. That's a very common phrase too. It means, hey, I'm coming or I'll be there or I'm following you. Ver, to see, becomes yo veo, yo veo. So this is essentially the concept right here, that there is a certain small set of verbs that when yo is the subject in the present tense, it's an irregular conjugation. And these are the conjugations. So these are what you have to remember. And like I said, it's pretty easy. Your brain will just start to remember them. Let's jump into some vocabulary, even though we have covered quite a bit of good vocabulary. Yo hago la cama. Yo hago la cama. I make the bed. Yo sigo el camino correcto. Yo sigo el camino correcto. I follow the correct path. Me caigo al amor con ella. Me caigo al amor con ella. I fall in love with her. Don't worry about this may part. Uh, this is the, We'll save that for a, a lesson further down the road. Te lo traigo ahora. I'll bring it to you now. Te lo traigo ahora. Again, don't worry about the te or the lo. Um, it does help you to get a little bit of exposure to this concept now, but I'm not going to cover any details. So um, just don't get discouraged by it. We'll cover it later, and you'll be really, really good at it. Yo tengo una cita. I have a date. Yo tengo una cita. Yo vengo con regalos. Yo vengo con regalos. I'm coming with gifts. No quepo. No quepo. I don't fit. Le pongo una pregunta. Le pongo una pregunta. I'll ask him a question. All right. We're going to jump right into the speaking practice now. This was kind of a short, shorter lesson, but uh, I think you've you had plenty of explanation. So this should really just be putting your knowledge now to use in a, in a real life situation. Okay, 
So for the speaking practice, you'll be asked a question in Spanish. The question will be repeated. I'll give you a few seconds to formulate your response. Take as long as you need to really formulate a good response, a good, accurate, correct response, as well as taking the time to pronounce it correctly. And, re and remember that in your um, response, you should be switching the placement of the subject and verb. So in my question, the subject comes after the verb. In your response, the subject comes before the verb. All right, and either my question to you or your response to me will require the yo subject so that we can actually practice this um, concept of irregular conjugations. Then you can listen as I give the correct response and make any notes or comparisons that you need to or corrections. Okay. Let's cover some quick pitfalls and we'll get on to the speaking practice. So the obvious pitfall is that you might mistakenly use the standard conjugation when a verb really actually requires the irregular. So um, this is common with very, very new Spanish speakers. They, they don't remember that a verb needs to be conjugated irregularly when yo is the subject. And so they just use the standard conjugation. I mean, this is, this is essentially why I'm teaching you this lesson because to avoid this type of thing. The next pitfall is that if you're speaking in a different tense, like past tense or future tense or conditional or subjunctive, um, you don't necessarily apply the same irregular conjugation, okay? So like one verb might be irregular in the present tense, but it's, it's not irregular in the past tense. It's just kind of normal in the past tense. So here's an example of a past tense um, um, verb. I left the office knowing that salir is irregular in the present tense when yo is the subject, you might also mistakenly think that it's irregular in the past tense, and you might say, yo salgi de la oficina, which is incorrect. The correct past tense conjugation is, yo salí de la oficina. Okay, so it's not irregular in the past tense. So those are essentially the two main pitfalls to avoid. And just recapping, here are the verbs. Again, if you need to take some time to look these over, feel free to pause the lesson now and get more familiar with them. Otherwise, we'll jump right into the speaking practice. ¿Tiene usted una pregunta? ¿Tiene usted una pregunta? Do you have a question? Sí, yo tengo una pregunta. Sí, yo tengo una pregunta. Yes, I have a question. ¿Cabes tú en la cama? ¿Cabes tú en la cama? Do you fit in the bed? No, yo no quepo en la cama. No, yo no quepo en la cama. Or, sí, sí, yo quepo en la cama. No, I don't fit in the bed. ¿Escoge usted el rojo? ¿Escoge usted el rojo? Now, in this question, I'm teaching you another principle, okay? So let's look at this translation and, and you'll, you'll see what I'm getting at. Do you choose the red one? Do you choose the red one? Okay, el rojo means the red one. And you'll do this a lot in Spanish where you use some type of adjective like rojo, which means red. And you'll just say el rojo, the red one. Or el bueno, the good one. Or el malo, the, the uh, bad one. So a lot of times we say things like that um, in Spanish. Just like el rojo, the red one. Sí, yo escojo el rojo. That rhymes. Sí, yo escojo el rojo. I like it. Yes, I choose the red one. Oh, okay, so just a quick break from the speaking practice. A lot of times I get asked, hey, what books do you recommend? And these are the books I recommend. I don't get paid for this. Um, I just want you to know what the most helpful books are for new students. So the first one is called 501 Spanish Verbs. 
And it's really kind of like a dictionary. It's not something you read from cover to cover, front to back. It's a reference. So anytime you have a question about a verb or what a verb means or how it's conjugated, how it translates, you can uh, use this book as a reference for that. It's a fantastic uh, resource for new Spanish speaking, actually for any Spanish speaking student. The second one is a thousand and one pitfalls in Spanish. This is a great book. It uh, warns you and helps you avoid a lot of the common mistakes that new Spanish speakers make. And finally, breaking out of beginner Spanish. This one's awesome. So these are the three books that I recommend to new Spanish speakers. Trae usted la comida. Trae usted la comida. Now I want to focus on the pronunciation around traer because uh, a lot of people have a hard time pronouncing this. The AE combination is not really a combination. Remember, in Spanish, every letter is pronounced. So you pronounce every letter in this word. Trae. T-R-A-E. They're all pronounced. Trae. Trae. It's just fast. Trae. Trae. Trae usted la comida? Do you bring the food? Si, yo traigo la comida. Si, yo traigo la comida. Yes, I bring the food. Traigo yo la comida? Traigo yo la comida? Do I bring the food? Si, tú traes la comida. Si, tú traes la comida. Yes, you bring the food. Haces tú la cama? Haces tú la cama? Do you make the bed? Si, yo hago la cama. Si, yo hago la cama. Remember, the H is silent. It's not hago. It's yo hago la cama. Yes, I make the bed. Vienes tú en coche? Vienes tú en coche? Are you coming by car? Si, yo vengo en coche. Si, yo vengo en coche. Yes, I am coming by car. Conduce usted el coche? Conduce usted el coche? Do you drive the car? Si, yo conduzco el coche. Si, yo conduzco el coche. Yes, I drive the car. ¿Me sigues a la reunión? ¿Me sigues a la reunión? Again, I'm exposing you a little bit to this concept where you put like a me or a te in front of the verb. Don't worry about it. Don't let it get you nervous. It's a fantastic tool. Um, I'm just, I'm just kind of exposing you a little bit to it so that uh, it's a little more familiar when we talk about it down the road in the intermediate course. So please check out that course and you'll learn all about this. Are you following me to the meeting? Are you following me to the meeting? Si, sí, te sigo a la reunión. Si, sí, te sigo a la reunión. Yes, I am following you to the meeting. All right, here's the comprehension exercise. Take a minute to read through the passage on the left and pause the lesson. When you're ready, unpause and I'll come in with the translation into English and I'll show you how to make those connections back and forth. Okay, are you ready? Let's do this together. Okay, yo sé, we already covered that. You know that that means I know. So yo sé, que means that or what. So in this case, it means that. Yo sé que ellos son flojos. I know that ellos son, they are flojos. Flojos is lazy. I know that they are lazy. Cada día, that means every day, cada día. Every day, yo les veo, I see them, 
Yo veo es I see. So, yo les veo durmiendo. I see them sleeping. Durmiendo is sleeping. Words that end like that, E-N-D-O or I-N-D-O or A-N-D-O, usually means it's an I-N-G translation into English. So, durmiendo is sleeping. Mientras. Mientras is a great word. It means while. So, les veo durmiendo mientras hago la comida. While I make all the food. <laughs> so, hago la comida is I make the food. Sabes que uno de ellos. So, sabes que is a very common phrase in Spanish. It means... Do you know that or do you know what? A lot of times you'll walk up to like a, a person, a friend or somebody and you'll say, hey, you know what? And in Spanish, that is translated into sabes que? So you'll hear a lot, that phrase a lot, sabes que? So sabes que uno de ellos, did you know that one of them, uno de ellos is one of them. Uno de ellos me preguntó. One of them asked me, me preguntó means asked me. Ask, one of them asked me if I was coming. So, si yo vengo. Si means if. Okay, so, me preguntó si, if, yo vengo, I was coming, para Limpiar sus cuartos. If I was coming to clean their rooms. Limpiar means to clean. Sus cuartos means their rooms. Yo no sigo así. I won't continue like this. Yo no sigo means I won't continue. Así means like this. Okay, this. Yo no sigo así. Entonces, and entonces is a great word. I won't continue like this. So... Or therefore, that's what entonces means. Pongo unas reglas. I'm putting down some rules. Pongo means I'm, I put or I, I set. So, pongo unas reglas. Unas is some, reglas is rules. All right, that does it for the comprehension exercise and for the entire lesson six.